Good morning everyone, I'm Harry. Uh, I've been a member of Restore for almost 20 years now. Um, and today I'm going to bring you John 4, 27 to 42 in the New International Version. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Then, leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of town to, and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then the disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying, it's still four months until harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits of their labour. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed for two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. We have now heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the saviour of the world. Today we have the wonderful Melissa preaching for us. Lord, we pray that you would give her words of wisdom like no other, Lord. It could only come from you. And we pray that you would allow her to communicate your word to us today, Lord. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Harry, for reading those Bible verses for us this morning. Good morning, everyone. My name is Melissa, and this is my husband, Dan. And we're coming to you from beyond ourselves this morning. And we're so excited about being with you. We're so excited to share this time together. Though we are a long way from Northeast London, um, we are we feel very much a part of the Restore family. If you're not familiar with Beyond Ourselves, Beyond Ourselves is an education charity that works in Zambia, and we lead the team here. And historically, Beyond Ourselves has worked really closely with community schools that were started with ch by churches and um, have provided a lot of support for them. However, more recently, our focus has really shifted to literacy training. And a lot has happened over this last year, um, not just with COVID, but actually our work has really grown and expanded and there's been a lot of really exciting things that have happened. And we just thought we'd take a few minutes to share about that uh, before we get into the word this morning. Um, but I just thought it'd be great for you to hear from Dan. He spearheads the literacy work that we're doing. And so Dan, why don't you just share with everyone what's been happening over this last year? Sure, yeah, so um, Beyond Ourselves have, um, traditionally we've been working with community schools and we've given support to community schools um, in the areas of financial support. So that's teacher salaries, feeding programs, high school bursaries, um, and professional support. So um, working with um, teachers that are largely unqualified um, and just really have the, um, they've only really got the experience of having been taught themselves. Um, so we've, we've helped them get on to the journey of becoming qualified teachers um, and um, improved capacity in terms of um, professional development as well. And so that area of what we've been doing has, has grown over the years. Um, we've had additional community schools get in touch with us um, and want us to, to support them in that way. Um, but then about three years ago, um, it really developed when um, Jolly Phonics, a publisher um, of Jolly, um, yeah, Jolly Publishing from the UK, got in touch with us and asked us to, um, to run some pilots in, in Jolly Phonics um, in government schools. And so, um, from there, we, we did some pilots um, of Jolly Phonics um, in some schools in Lusaka and some schools here in Indola, um, where we're based, and, and that went really well. Um, and the, the provincial overseer for, um, for the Copper Belt, which he's based in here in Indola, um, really took a keen interest in what we were doing and just was really um, impressed with what um, the, the standards that the children were coming up with. Um, and so therefore, he, he asked us to, to expand upon that. And so in, in 2020, um, it expanded to the point where we, we're doing lots of these pilots in, in each of the districts of the Copper Belt. Um, and so 
Um, that's where we were at um, at the beginning of the COVID year and then schools closed um, in March um, and we kind of had to get creative with how we were going to support teachers. Um, so we, we'd done the training um, for um, these, these about 30, 30 schools um, and we'd done training with the teachers and we were just getting to the point where we were going to be going in and mentoring them um, when um, the schools closed. And so we we found different ways of doing that from a distance. So we had WhatsApp groups where people submitted videos and we gave feedback. And then um, we ended up doing um, radio lessons as well to support learners and as well as um, educators or home educators. Um, and then when schools reopened, we continued with our with our training and, and found that it wasn't just the government schools that were interested, but, but we were able to do um, training with um, private schools um, and international schools and community schools and where the, the training with the private schools ended up funding the training that we were doing with community schools mm -hmm. as well. Um, and the, the closure of schools also gave us um, space to, to do some of the things that we'd been wanting to do for a long time but um, were, were kind of um, consumed by, by working with, with the community schools that we were partnered with. Um, and so we, um, we were able to develop some resources. And so working with Jolly Phonics, um, we'd found that it's, it was a, a really good program and works well for, for the UK context, particularly, um, you know, it was developed in the UK um, and for children in, in British schools. Um, but we'd found that there were some, some areas that, that where Jolly Phonics could be improved upon um, to, to better make it fit the context that we were working with it in. And so um, we, we developed a resource and based on that, um, engaged a, a local artist to, to help mm. um, develop that as well. And, and then with some trepidation, we sent it off to Jolly Phonics for, for uh, approval. Um, really, we were just kind of looking for them to be able to say, yeah, you can, you can use that. Um, but they, they ended up coming back um, saying that they were really, um, I think delighted was the, the word that they used a few times with it. Um, and, and it got to the point where they were so happy with it that they were able to endorse it and, and happy for it to be called Jolly Phonics um, for Zambia. Um, and so... Um, that's the resource that we've got to, and we've we've now sent it off to the Ministry of General Education here um, to get ratified. And then, um, if that comes back all clear, um, then it should be a case that this is this is being cleared to be used in in schools nationwide, um, which is really exciting. And I think something that a few years ago is mm -hmm. something that we'd only kind of dreamed of. Um, so yeah, and then um, in addition to that, um, this year as well. We've, we've continued with those pilots um, and to try and see um, the year through that, that kind of got interrupted last year. We weren't really able to to make proper evaluations of, um, of the last year because of um, six months not being in school. Um, and this year it's just continued to, to build momentum. Um, and we've, um, we've done training with um, like the top schools in Zambia. And we've done training in Lusaka where people have come from, from every corner of the, of the nation. Um, and then we've done training in like the biggest maximum security prison of Southern Africa as well. Mm -hmm. So th there's just been opportunities that we've never, never dreamed about mm -hmm. even. Um, and God's just been so faithful in, in all of it. And we've, we've just been amazed at, um, yeah, at everything that's kind of um, been um, coming our way in that mm -hmm. regard. So, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Dan. No worries. Thank you. <laughs> If you would like more information about what we do or um, just want to connect with us personally, we would love to hear from you. My email address is melissa at beyondourselves.life. I'm, so, I'm sure someone can pop that on the live chat. And um, we would love to hear from you. So don't, um, don't hesitate getting in touch. Well, I'm really delighted to be sharing with you this morning in the Living Water series. Um, this is a passage of scripture that's been really meaningful to me in the past and um, is, a, is a really powerful story. And, um, and so I've been so enjoying delving into this word these last few weeks. If you've not had a chance to, to listen in the last few weeks, I'd encourage you to do so. We've been looking at the story of the woman at the well in John 4 and talking about how Jesus crossed barriers to meet with this woman, how by the power of the Holy Spirit and a word of knowledge, he connected with her and transformed her life. And uh, this morning we're talking about the power of a personal encounter. And we really pick this story up where uh, Jesus and the woman, they're kind of wrapping up their conversation. And so I'm going to read John 4 verse 26 to 30 from the Passion Translation. And it says this. 
Jesus said to her, You don't have to wait any longer. The anointed one is here speaking with you. I am the one you're looking for. At that moment, when Jesus had just revealed who, she, who he was, the disciples returned and were stunned to see the woman speaking to the Samaritan woman. Yet none of them dared to ask why or what they were discussing. All at once, the woman dropped her water jar and ran off to her village and told everyone, Come and meet a man at the well who told me everything I've ever done. He could be the anointed one we've been waiting for. Hearing this, people, the people came streaming out of the village to go and see Jesus. I love this, this whole story, but I think these few verses especially are so descriptive because you can just imagine the woman and, and Jesus are having this conversation and it's, it's kind of coming to its peak where Jesus was revealing who he is. And then just at that time, the disciples return back and they don't even ask why they're talking to each other because it would have been so disgraceful in that time for them to be speaking to each other. So they don't ask why or what they're discussing. It's like there's this super awkward silence. And then the woman drops her jar and dashes to, the, to her village and she tells people, come and meet a man who told me everything I've ever done. And, and the people, upon hearing about her encounter, come back to the well and meet Jesus. And uh, this morning, I really want to highlight two things from, from this story. And the first is from verse 26, where he says, you don't have to wait any longer. The anointed one is speaking to you. I am the one you're looking for. Jesus is the one we're looking for. Jesus is the one we're looking for. I think this is so powerful. You know, we are all designed in a way where uh, we are meant to connect with God. There's, it's like there's a space in our lives that can only be filled with him. And no matter how much we try to fill it with work or relationships or food or money or sex or gambling or whatever it may be, there is a space that only God can fill. And um, I think we're all guilty of trying to fill those spaces with other things. But we also know from the story that this woman, she had a history of, of being with many men. And even the man that she was with at that time wasn't her husband. And uh, she too wanted to be filled. She had that, that space in her life. But yet she was, was using men to try to fill that gap in her, li her life. And yet here it says, you don't have to wait any longer. I am the one you're looking for. I'm the one that you're looking for to be in that space in your life. And I just felt like that is a word for some, for some of us this morning. Jesus is the one you're looking for in that place of emptiness or that place um, where you just, yeah, you feel like there's a void. Jesus is the one you're looking for. I feel like also for some of you, in your situation, in your circumstance, in your problems, Jesus is the one that you're looking for. Now, I think when God comes into our life, oftentimes it doesn't look the way we expect it. Um, it doesn't come in the form that we, that we anticipated. I don't know about you, but I am so prone to the idea that when, if I'm filled with God's, um, with his life and with Jesus, then, you know, I'm filled with joy all the time and, and I have no problems and I feel peace all the time and everything is so good. My situations is, my situation is always nice and happy. Um, but that really isn't the truth. I think that so often we want Jesus to take us out of our situation when actually he wants to resource us right where we are. And just to say, I don't think it's wrong for us to ask Jesus um, to take us out of some circumstances or some situations that we're in. I don't think that's the case at all. Um, I also think that sometimes we're the ones that can walk right out of it. We're the answer to our own prayer. But what I do know is that wherever we are, God, Jesus can resource us where we are. This passage of scripture has been really meaningful to me in the past. We have three sons, um, and when our middle son, Ben, was born, uh, his first couple years were tough, really tough. 
Um, he was a very discontented baby and then toddler, and he did not sleep well at night. And he had some, and continues to have some digestive and some stomach issues. And here in Zambia, we don't have a lot of medical expertise. So a lot of those questions about his health remained unanswered for a long time. And that was really frustrating. He was a bit developmentally delayed as well. So he didn't walk until he was 23 months. And he was a big, and is a boy, a big boy. And so I lived with a toddler on my hip. And for anyone who has had a baby who is unhealthy, or and a toddler who is unhappy in the day, and then up all night, will know how truly exhausting that can be. And then throw into the mix, we had interns that lived with us during that season. And we also, we didn't have our beautiful Beyond Ourselves offices where I am right now. Uh, we didn't have that. And so our living room was actually our team space. And that was a lot. <laughs> I'm also an introvert, so that really was a lot. And those couple years were hard, really hard. And you know, I, I don't even know how many times I felt Jesus lead me to this story during that season of my life. And I felt him encourage me to close my mind, my eyes and imagine that I was the woman at the well. That I was the one there to receive a drink and receive the Holy Spirit, to receive resourcing from him. I love the verse in or the words in verse 14 where it says, For when you drink of the water I give you, it becomes a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit flooding you with endless life. And you know, I would close my eyes and I would imagine I was that woman at the well. And by faith, I would believe, Jesus, you're filling me with your Holy Spirit. That gushing life, I might not feel it, but in faith, in faith, I receive that. And you know, uh, I came back to that place sometimes multiple times a day where I've just felt like I needed, I needed more resourcing, I needed more from him. And I would have loved to have a, a one big drink and then be good and my situation to change and I feel full and I can just love my family and be great at my job and have capacity for everything. But again, <laughs> Jesus doesn't often come the way that we expect, that's what I wanted. But what I really, what really happened was that I kept coming back for one drink, another drink, another one. And I would hear him say, I'm the one you're looking for. I'm the one you're looking for. You don't have to wait any longer. I was so desperate for my situation to change. And, and I should say that I'm terrible at leaning on people. Um, I am trying to grow in that and be better at asking for help. I, I was terrible at that in this season. And, and I also want to say I never would think or that I don't think that, you know, God wanted us to walk that hard road with Ben and for his, you know, to have problems with his health or anything like that. But what I do know is that day after day, he resourced me in that season of my life. Two years after Ben was born, uh, I had the opportunity to go to Cape Town and be part of a dignity campaign training, which is led by Alkia Brower, who is somebody that um, some of you would know. And I went to Cape Town so weary. Uh, ben, he actually took his first steps the night before I left. And I got to Cape Town and was part of this week-long training that was amazing. It was so amazing. And... Um, but what was more transformative than the training itself was just how refreshing it was for me personally. And um, I, I, the week was kind of uncharacteristically cold and windy, and it was right by the beach, the place, the kind of part of Cape Town that we were in. And I had had many walks along the beach, but my last day there, I thought, let me go for a swim. I love swimming. I love the water. And I thought, when am, when am I going to be at the ocean next, right? I'd I better take this opportunity. So I uh, change and I get into the water. Nobody else is in the water. It's chilly. There's loads of people walking, though, but I'm like the only one in this massive beach. And the waves are huge. And so I'm jumping in the waves and playing, really. Um, on my own and um, and it wasn't long before I remembered the words of the song and your love in wave after wave crashes over me crashes over me and I just suddenly felt so much of the love of God coming over me and over me again and again and then I looked out into the vast expanse of the ocean and I just was overwhelmed by the presence of God 
because I remembered how over the last couple of years I had taken a small drink and a small drink and a small drink and it was like God was saying, I am as vast as the ocean. My resourcing, my life, my this living water is as vast as the ocean. And and all at once I started kind of laughing and crying at the same time, all the while still jumping in the water and, you know, trying to stay above above water. Um, so I must have looked fairly ridiculous, um, but I didn't care at all because I felt so loved and I felt so full of the Holy Spirit. I felt um, just an incredible ill feeling of the Holy Spirit. And I had to laugh a few weeks ago when, when Eon was sharing about being at the Niagara Falls and and also kind of desiring the Holy Spirit and being filled with him and being like, I want as much of you as the water that's crashing over here. And and it was similar, a similar sort of thing, like, God, I, I just I receive your love and I receive your infilling of the, the Holy Spirit that's as vast as the ocean. I want more, I want more of you. And you know, I left Cape Town. I felt so different and and then I was put back in a situation where really nothing had changed although Ben was on his feet then um, but but at the same time everything had changed and what's interesting is that after that I made a concerted effort I need to lean on people Malcolm and Emily lived out here at that time and I just knew I needed to lean on these wonderful people that were in my life and so willing to help I needed to lean on them more and we needed to build an office. We absolutely needed to build an office and have better boundaries and have um, a situation that, that set us up to succeed better. And so we made those changes. Um, however, I just wanted to just to say, I, like I said before, I just feel like some of you are, are watching today or watching in a few weeks time and, and you feel so dry and I just want to encourage you. Jesus is the one you're looking for and, and you don't have to wait any longer. He wants to give you a drink. And I don't know if you'll be back for another drink in five minutes. I don't know when your breakthrough is coming. But while you wait, Jesus is there. Jesus, he, he is there with a drink every time. I just feel like he's saying to you, let me give you a drink this morning. Let me resource you right where you are. The second thing that I wanted to highlight from this this morning is the power of being known. John 4 verse 28 to 30 says this, all at, woman, uh, all at once, sorry, the woman dropped her water jar and ran off to her village and told everyone, come and meet a man at the well who told me everything I've ever done. He could be the anointed one we're looking for. Hearing this, the people came streaming out of the village to go and see Jesus. We don't really know what sets her off on her run, right? Maybe she feels caught out having spoken to a man, like that was disgraceful, right, at this time. Or maybe that it's just so awkward, right? We get a sense of that as well. But regardless, she drops her jug and she sets off for her village. And what starts off as something that seems really reactive becomes very intentional because by the time she gets there, she is telling people, come and meet a man at the well who's told me everything I've ever done. And she's sharing with her neighbors and her family and her friends about this encounter that she's had with Jesus. It's so purposeful. And, uh, and I love what she says, right? Her testimony or her, what she's saying is, come and meet a man who's told me everything I've ever done. And in some ways I feel like this is a bit of a bizarre thing to say, because um, because we know from earlier on in the scripture that in, in these verses that Jesus, because he brought it up, he, he was pointing out that she had been with a lot of men, right? And the man that she was with then wasn't her husband. And so in some ways, her past, the things that Jesus knew about, weren't necessarily things to be celebrated, maybe, or that would seem successful. As she's sharing this with her neighbors, right? Come and meet a man who's told me everything I've done when maybe what they know about her isn't great. So I just think that that's really interesting. But something about her encounter must have really interested the people that she was with. And I feel like, you know, she could have left her conversation with Jesus feeling so much shame because of what she had done and the choices that she had made. And yet 
And yet she doesn't. She doesn't leave feeling with shame. She's leaving celebrating being known. And I, I have to believe, or I really do believe, that Jesus, he so loved her. He so loved her when, when they were talking that something about that being known and being loved must have been expressed to her neighbours and to her family and her friends. Come and meet a man who told me everything I've ever done and filled everything with love covered everything with love, who didn't shame me about my poor decisions, but filled me with love. Come and meet a man. She's celebrating being known. And I think, I think, aren't we all so desperate to be known or, or have a deep desire to be known, to be seen, to be understood? I think that's, that's a heart, that it's a desire that each of us has to be known. And, um, and I think a lot of us sometimes feel invisible or feel like nobody sees us, feel like nobody gets us, maybe. I think our selfie culture kind of screams out this desire to be known, right? Look at me, see me, see what I'm doing, see who I am or who I'm pretending to be. Like, see me, see me, right? We're calling out for that. But again, I think it's because it's coming out of this heart's desire to be known, to be known by God to be known and to be filled with love. Lately, I've been listening to the song Gyra by Maverick City Music, uh, pretty much on repeat. And if you've not listened to it, go onto YouTube afterwards and listen to it. It's so, so good. It's so powerful because it's all about how God is enough and how we are also enough. How God and his presence and his love and his living water is enough. But also he says to us, you are enough. And I love the middle bit of the song, especially where the woman sings, she sings, if, if he dresses the lilies with beauty and splendor, how much more will he clothe you? How much more will he clothe you? And if he watches over every sparrow, how much more will he love you? How much more will he love you? And this is coming from what Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount in, in Matthew 6. And I think it's just so powerful. He sees you. He knows you. He sees us and he knows us. And that's so powerful, celebrating being known. A couple of months ago, I started exercising. Um, COVID had destroyed my routine and I had yet to pick it up again. And so two months ago, uh, I, I started to, to try to make some healthier choices. And uh, two weeks after that, after really slogging uh, through getting up in early in the mornings and that sort of thing, um, Dear friends of ours who are Americans, um, but are our neighbors, actually live where Malcolm and Emily used to live. They had been in the States and they came back from a visit that they had there. And uh, they very kindly bought our family various different gifts and treats. And when my friend Heidi gave me my gift bag, she had a bit of an awkward look on her face. And she said, it's, it's a bit weird, but I hope you like it. And so later in the evening, I opened up my gift bag to find that there were some workout clothes in there, and which fit perfectly. And I really had to laugh because I felt so known by God, but genuinely encouraged to keep going as well. And um, because I hadn't told Heidi that I was doing this, Heidi and I, we are not running buddies, cycling buddies. We don't get our heart rates up together. That's not the nature of our friendship. And so, um, so in many ways, this was such a left field gift and yet it was totally spot on at the same time. And so um, I told Heidi about this, about how I've been trying to exercise and how her gift was, was just, uh, was so spot on and how it expressed so much of God's heart for me. And she said that she really wanted to get me a meaningful gift, not just anything, but a really meaningful gift. And there's lots of lovely things she could have got me, but she wanted a meaningful gift. And so she went to a big um, store, you know, those big American stores where they have a lot of everything. And she said, so she prayed, she said, Holy Spirit, lead me to something that would really bless Melissa. And that's what she walked out of the shop with. And she said she wasn't sure, but she went with it. So she felt, she said she felt so encouraged by what I shared. And like I said, I felt so known um, and so encouraged as well. But it really reminded me, and this passage reminds me, of just how powerful it is to be known by God. But I think that this passage and, and, um, and, and this story that I've just shared as well also reminds me of, um, or challenges me, me to ask God to help me to know those around me better. 
whether they're friends I already know, whether they're people that know Jesus or don't, I think that to know somebody is really powerful. And actually, there's an invitation by God to um, for us to be asking to know those around us better. I loved Stuart's practical tips from a couple of weeks ago about mapping out your locality, mapping out who lives right by you, mapping out who you're at the school gate with or at work or who you play with or whatever it may be. Writing down those names. And then wasn't last week with Lauren so powerful, right? Asking for words of knowledge. And I think it's really about putting those two things together. You know, what do I, who do I know around me? And then asking God, you know, what, what do you want me to know about them? How do I move forward in this relationship with this person? Let's see those around us. Let's know those around us because it's so powerful. And we see from this story, right? This woman had this encounter and then it went on and it transformed her village. We heard in verse 30 about how streams of people came out from her village to meet Jesus. And then in verse 35, it actually talks about crowds emerging from the village. And it's interesting because the disciples and Jesus have a little bit of a side conversation at that point. And they talk about, Jesus is talking about how people are hungry. People are thirsty for a relationship with God. He's saying the harvest is ripe. He's basically saying people's hearts are ready to be in relationship with God. I think that's a challenge for us. If people are ready, then we have the opportunity to speak into their lives to ask God for a word that enables us to connect with them. Or maybe we know something in the natural already that allows us to connect with them, but maybe we don't. But either way, let's be intentional about connecting with those around us. Then in verse 39 and 40, it says, Many from the Samaritan village became believers in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. Then they begged Jesus to stay with them. So he stayed with them for two days, resulting in many more coming to faith because of his, of his message. Isn't that powerful? Again, the woman, her encounter meant that so many from her village came to know Jesus. She said, come and meet a man who told me everything I've ever done. Come and meet a man who didn't shame me. Come and meet a man who filled me with love. Come and meet a man who accepted me for who I was. Come and meet a man. And I think that that's a challenge for us to say to those around us, come and meet a man. Come and meet this man. Come and meet a man. And I I want to encourage you, and I'm encouraging myself as well, um, I don't know about you, but I, I so loved what Lauren said <clears throat> last week. And But I'm so prone to kind of feel challenged for a week and then that challenge sort of dissipates. And I just really want to encourage you and like I said, challenge myself as well, just to keep leaning in, to keep asking God for words of knowledge or words of um, encouragement for those around us. Just being so intentional of, with the people that I meet, whether, whether I know them well or I don't, or it's a long conversation or short, being intentional intentional and being intentional about releasing the love of God to those around us. And so I just want to pray for us this morning. I want to pray for you if you're feeling weary and dry this morning. I know that God wants to give you a drink and to refresh you, refresh you and resource you where you are. I also want to pray that we um, we understand for ourselves that we are known by God but that also we are challenged, not just now, but in the days and even the weeks to come to continue to really ask God to help us to know those around us. So let's pray. God, I want to thank you for this story. I want to thank you for the powerful words that are um, in this passage, the, the powerful themes that are here. And God, I want to just really want to lift up those people this morning who are feeling so dry so in need of refreshment. God, I don't know when the breakthrough is coming. I don't know when their change of situation is coming. But God, I do know that you're there with them. And I just want to ask you, God, to open up their eyes so that they can see that you're offering them a drink. And I pray, Father, that they would be resourced right where they are. Help them, Father, just to connect Uh, with Jesus right now in that place and be filled with you. And yes, they might need to come back in, in a few more minutes or a few hours, but you are there. 
you are there. And God, would they really know that this morning? And Father, I also just want to really pray that you would help us to... Um, to be known by you. God, I know that sometimes we put up stuff, barriers in our lives that um, that mean that we feel shame or we feel condemnation. We feel things that mean that we, we push you out, that we're not fully known and not fully receiving your love. And, and I pray, Father God, that you would, you would show us this morning what those are. Help us to know, God, those areas of shame in our life. and to experience you flooding them with love. Washing over them with your Holy Spirit. And God, as, as we are known, Father, would we encourage or, um, yeah, would we ha help others around us to be known by you as well? God, I pray that this, the, these words of come and meet a man who told me everything I've ever done, come and meet a man who's full of love. God, I just pray that that would be something that would stick with us in the coming week, that we would uh, be intentional in our conversations with those around us, that um, in, in what we're saying and what we're doing, would, would there be a sense of come and meet this man, come and meet this man, Jesus. Come and meet this man who wants to show you his love and his kindness and his forgiveness and his grace. Come and meet this man. So, Father, I just pray that you continue to prompt us to be asking for words of knowledge, for words of encouragement. God, help us to keep asking you to keep opening our eyes so that we can see our neighbors, so that we can see our friends, we can see our colleagues, we can see um, our, our kids um friends, parents, God, just help us, Lord, to see people, Lord, to, to understand them, to get them, and to love them, God. God, would we take those opportunities that you put in front of us? God, thank you for the way that this woman's encounter transformed those in her village. And God, I pray that our encounters with you would transform the lives of those around us as well. In Jesus' name. Amen.